So in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to replace the old spoil board on the CNC with a brand new spoil board. So you're going to want to start out with a brand new sheet of three quarter inch thick MDF. That's just standard MDF and it should be five foot by 10 foot. Um, some things you're going to want to remember is that you need to turn all eight vacuum valves in the down position so all eight are engaged and turned on. This is so that it draws the entire spoil, spoil board down flat. And in the bench selector tab, you're going to need to turn on the spoil board milling and the disable automatic unload panel. All the rest can be turned off and just those two need to be turned on. So in the um, wood flash product folder is where we have a folder called creating a new spool board. And in that folder, I just made a bunch of folders that have like the just steps to follow. And um, so our steps are basically going to be, we're going to trim the spool board. That's just going to run this program. That all this program does is just run that uh, half inch mill straight down the, the front edge of the board to, to trim it, to give, get it to size. So before you actually run the program, you're going to want to go to the bench selector tab and make sure that spoil board milling and disable automatic unload panel are both checked. Everything else can be unchecked. second step we're gonna mill our spool board we're gonna run this program here and when we run this program um, I'll show you here on the screen so product creating a new spoil board milling the spoil board um, we drop it in here all we have to do to mill a spoil board is when we come over to the dimensions here we just we don't mess with the checkbox we don't change anything here we just uh tell it what thickness of spool board we want that to end up being so if we want that to be like you know and that's millimeters yep 18.8 or whatever uh we say 18.8 and it'll mill it to 18.8 and when we're milling our new spool board it's when we uh, the thickness we want to get to is the thickness that gets rid of that outer layer because uh, mdf has like an outer thicker like a a more dense layer. And if we don't get rid of that dense layer, the vacuum doesn't actually seep through the spoil board properly. Uh, really important that when we mill this the first time that we uh, we get rid of that first layer. So if we, we mill it down to, like you said you measured it at what, 19.3? Yeah. So I'd probably start us at 19, and we'll, we'll mill it at 19, and then we'll feel it. And you'll be able to feel the dip. You'll, you should also be able to see it, but you'll be able to feel the difference between like the inner MDF and the outer. And for, for this milling, we wanna make sure we get rid of it all. Because once we flip it, we're never gonna be able to touch it again. Yeah, you definitely, like right now, you definitely wanna make sure we get rid of that hard outer layer. Cause like, that's gonna be like a spot where vacuum will still get there. Cause like, you know, it's gonna permeate through the whole piece, but like, it's not gonna have that direct suction right there. You know what I mean? So how much would you suggest taking off? Um, really, it's just it, until you get rid of it. So it kind of so depends on the MDF you have. Yeah, okay. every batch MDF might be slightly different. So yeah, that's milling the spool board. And again, for milling this spool board, um, that changing changing the thickness is all going to be done by uh, this thickness value here in the dimensions. So if we wanted to go from nine, say we would start at nineteen, and then if we want to go deeper, um, we could go to like you know I usually go by. 0.2 mil at a time. If I go down to 18.8, see what it looks like. Go down to 18.6. So that was step two, the wing scoreboard. So step three um, doesn't have a program inside of it. It's just there for reference. Some, a lot of these folders are. It's just flip the spool board. So now we're gonna flip the spool board.
once we flip the spool board, so now our surface that we milled is now down, um, then we're gonna drill the spool board. Now, when we drill the spool board, I guess for you right now, you got your spool board like exactly where your own spool board is. What, the, I guess, the key here is when you mill this new spool, when you drill the new spool board, you don't want the spool board fully pushed against your rail and pin because when you screw it down, it could be rubbing against them and that'll cause issues where it's like your pin's not gonna pop up properly. So usually I would have the pins pop up, push it against the pins and just bump it away from it slightly. Uh, worst case, if it happens that when we do screw it down and you do have it too close, then like I've had people who just maybe like you can like cut a little channel in for it, but I, I, I see here you guys have it bumped out pretty good. Like I would just keep the same same way that you have it. Just do that again. Okay. And then yeah, for drilling the spool board, it's as simple as we'll, we'll drop the. I'll cut that line again. We'll go in the drill spool board. We got this spool board drilling program. We drop it in. It's already got everything in there. Really, we just we just run this program like this. Um, and because you're running on top of the other, the old spool board, you don't have to worry about actually running into the matrix table or anything because you can you can go right down. Uh, once we drill our spool board, well then again, this is just folder for reference. We're going to remove the old spool board. So when you're removing the old spool board, you will want to loosen up the nylon bolts by hand. You want to be careful not to overdo it because it can easily strip out or break and then it'll just be a lot more difficult to get out. But then once you do that, you can, if you need to, use an automatic drill to get them the rest of the way out and carefully remove the board. You don't want to slide it across the matrix table. But once the board is removed, you want to carefully vacuum out each vacuum hole and the entire matrix table, just making sure there's no dust on it. We're gonna screw down our new spoil board. So when you're doing the new spoil board, you wanna lift it up, cut away the bulging from the drilling that you just did, and sand it flush so that it sits flat on the matrix table. And just be careful not to scratch the matrix table when you're putting back on. And when you're re-tightening the nylon nuts, you can get it started with an automatic drill just to get it close, but you have to finish it up by hand. Otherwise, they could very easily break. And then this is, make sure we change the spool board thickness. This, at this point, now we have our new spool board on there. We're going to make sure we change this number to whatever we ended up milling the spool board down to in that step two. So we got it down to 18.5. That's when we would change this to 18.5. And then once we do that, we mill our new spool board. And again, this is just that program where to mill the spool board, now that the new spool board is screwed down and the only thing there, we would just use this, say it was 18.5, we'd change it to like 18.3, let it take off 0.2 mil, and then go from there. So we're gonna mill it. And again, we're gonna wanna get rid of all the outer uh, waxy layer, glossy layer, whatever you wanna call it. But on this side, it's not as imperative that you get rid of everything. If you still have little spots, it's not the end of the world. You'll get rid of Just, you yeah, you'll get rid of them as you mill it down further. It's just if you have a nice big spot, you're probably gonna want to use it. So again, on this part of the process, it's important to have spoil board milling checked and disable automatic unload panel, just like in the beginning. And once again, you want all the vacuum areas turned on so that it's drawing down the entire spoil board. And once the vacuum is engaged, you'll wanna go ahead and just give those nylon bolts just a little extra snug and just to make sure they're all tight when it's fully vacuumed down so that it doesn't move at all. And do not forget the one that is hidden inside the drilling head in that very back left corner. It's, it's very straightforward. And again, um, the reason I like to do it this way is you don't have to ever uncheck that checkbox. Yeah. Because if you uncheck that checkbox and you run a program, depending on the program, 
it'll run because it'll let you cut the entire spoil board. It doesn't care. It doesn't. It just doesn't want to hurt itself, so it won't hit the matrix table. But um, yeah, you can definitely dig into the spoil board pretty deep.